A Fox News alert. House lawmakers are demanding answers from the Secret Service on the potential security failures that led to shots being fired just a few hundred yards away from the former president. The chair and ranking member of the Trump assassination attempt task force releasing this statement. The task force is monitoring this attempted assassination of former President Trump in West Palm Beach this afternoon. We have requested a briefing with the U.S. Secret Service about what happened and how security responded. We are thankful that the former president was not harmed, but remain deeply concerned about political violence and condemn it in all of its forms. The task force will share updates as we learn more. Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe joins us now. Congressman, what answers are you demanding of Secret Service and, quite frankly, the entire apparatus that is charged with protecting President Trump? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of questions that Congress has asked, and I don't think the task force has even been given answers on the last shooting that happened in Butler, Pennsylvania. The names of every single service, uh, Secret Service agent that was on the ground that day. What is very interesting is the Trump team has repeatedly asked Secretary Mayorkas for more Secret Service agents to protect President Trump and had been refused until the Butler shooting multiple different times. Why is that? Why does the Secretary of Homeland Security not want to provide security to the former president, the leading nominee for the Republican uh, presidential race here in November. Why doesn't he want to give them the assets that his own team is requesting? It's hard not to believe that this isn't an effort to give him lower levels of security. The Palm Beach sheriff even said that had he been the president, they would have had that entire golf course shut down. So why are we not treating him uh, like he's the president? Because there's already been multiple threats at his life, multiple attempts at his life. It's very frustrating as a member of Congress, one, did not get answers from the Secret Service, and two, the agency that's supposed to be deemed the only job to protect our former and current presidents, and they're not doing it appropriately. Yeah, what are your, what are your thoughts on the way Secret Service handled this situation? I mean, thank God there was that one agent who spotted the muzzle of the gun in the chain link fence, but there are questions about why it got to that level to begin with. Yeah, how did the guy get there uh, knowing that the president was going to be there? Why wasn't that area locked down? It's just like the Butler shooting. How did an individual climb up on a roof with a firearm where people around were saying, hey, there's a guy over there with a gun climbing up on the roof? How was he laying up there for like 20 minutes or something before he took a shot? You can't tell me that the snipers that day didn't have a, a bead or a view on him before he took a shot. Why wasn't he taken out before he was able even to get on the roof? It's there's so many questions that I have as a former military guy and looking at tactics and, and the situation there and Butler and then to the, and then the, the last shooting, uh, that the Secret Service is just refusing to provide answers. You saw when she was before Congress, she refused to provide answers and ended up resigning after I filed an impeachment resolution against her. Uh, it's very frustrating to not get answers from an agency that we oversee. And to the point, it's important to point out again that when you drive by this course, it's not like you can look in and see the golfer playing. There's greenery that is blocking anybody from the road to seeing inside the course. So obviously this individual had to have some level of planning involved. Do you blame Congressman the constant drumbeat from the left that Trump is a threat to democracy for yesterday's attempt and yet another attempt on his life? 100 percent. After January 6th, Nancy Pelosi called all of us Republican members of Congress domestic terrorists. Those words uh, are impactful to people that are looking to do harm to people. So we've been called domestic terrorists. There are repeated, repeated calls that Trump is a threat to democracy, which is actually the left. I mean, Kamala Harris hasn't had a single person vote for her for president, and she's the nominee. I mean, that, if there's not a, a more threat to democracy, it's that she was picked behind closed doors in a Democratic convention, and then she's the person that they put out with a, not a single person voting for her. Yeah. But the rhetoric from the left every single day that Trump is a threat to democracy and a threat to our country, uh, it drove this guy to do what he did. He already, Facebook's already taken down his, uh, his Facebook page that even said that Trump was a threat to democracy. Yeah, and uh, after this happened and Donald Trump got uh, whisked away inside after shots rang out, apparently he was in good spirits and joking and saying it was unfortunate that it happened at the fifth hole because he had a birdie putt right. and, and was doing pretty well. So I think his attitude among all of this, uh, the drama and potential life-threatening situation should be noted as well. Congressman, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for Thank joining you, us. Sir.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.